Thank you. What up, Big Richmond? How we doing, baby? It's a spiritual pleasure to be chilling with y'all tonight. Gonna open up with a holy song about a hainted backwoods Tennessee town. right near where I used to live, Johnson City, Tennessee, and I met up with some psychedelic homies of mine, and I was asking about an ex-girlfriend of mine who lived in Johnson City, right near Sneedville. Her mom was associated with Sneedville in a psychedelic way, and I said, yo, how's she doing? They said, dude, she stabbed her boyfriend in the chest, <laughs> and then freaked out, drove him to the emergency room, and made him tell him he fell on the knife. I said, that's about right. And I tried to get her to come to the gig, but she was out of town. You know. It's probably a good thing she wouldn't. You gotta stab a sometimes, though. Exactly. So we can't breathe. Exactly. Now, you know, before I went on this mystic tour, I was on a 300 mile hike up in the Appalachian psychedelic ass prawns out there. Let me tell you guys about a few of them. So, I seen this dog that 
dog years was probably 200 years old. <laughs> and it was emaciated as a motherfucker. Shriveled deep in a holler. And this dude came through and put three chickens worth of chicken fingers up in front of it. And it sucked them back in like less than 20 seconds. And his belly blew up like a motherfucking blimp. And it was going, I said, hell yeah. Three chickens worth of fingers. It was like three basketballs up inside the mystic belly of the emaciated 200-year-old dog. Yeah. Next thing you know, I'm at a mystical shelter, haunted as a motherfucker. Two levels. I'm on the bottom level with all these ladies and a couple of shrimps. We're chilling out. Fifteen feet up is the second level. We all blacked out, passed out. In the middle of the night, 4 a.m., boom, loud-ass noise. But like, do we know somebody fell off that top bunk? That's a deadly drop. Might see a carcass down yonder. Turn on the holy headlamps. Everybody's freaking out. Who was it? You know what I'm saying? What was it? We're not seeing nothing on the floor. Like, what was it? A ghost? All of a sudden, we look in the corner. There's a shriveled 90-year-old dude chilled out. Like, emaciated, looked like he had been from some hainted joint. And he was wearing a blue satin thong. And his body was contorted in a hainted way. I said, you okay? I said, dude, that's a shriveled grandpa in a blue satin thong. And he just fell like 20 feet. Probably broke his neck or something. The fuck's going on? You okay? And he stands up slowly. I said, he's all right. Somebody gave him a cigarette lighter. He lit it up. And he was standing there staring off into the darkness. Sagged out ass cheeks. Sagged out motherfucking dong shrimping out. 90 year old grandpa in the blue satin thong in the middle of the woods. I got the fuck out of that spot. <laughs> next thing you know, it's the next evening. I'm chilling and I met this guy named Earbuds. <laughs> he was chilling with the dude, an obese Nick Nolte lookalike, whose name was Nick Nolte. <laughs> I'm manimal, manimal when I'm out on the trail, manimal. I met this guy shit foot. His feet smell like shit. And that was his name. You can imagine the stench. Earbuds comes rolling into camp, and he's chilling, and he pulls out a two-pound summer sausage, a two-pound football of meat. Deep throats it in less than a minute. Somebody was tiny. My boy was on the clock. I said, dude, and the entire time, he is deep throating a two pound summer sausage. In a minute, he was lecturing while deep throating about how you're not supposed to eat much food out on the trail. I said, dude, that's twisted. Your motherfucking name isn't Earbuds, it's Summer Sausage. <laughs> and then a lot of people started calling him two pounds one minute. <laughs> I said, hell yeah. Next thing you know, I meet five people that camped out at a mystic spot. And they hung their food in the bear hang from the limb. So the bears couldn't get their food. We're talking five people, five bags of food. Hung the ship from the limb. The bears at this specific campsite that I had stayed at before, they've been getting smart. And they learned how to stand on each other's shoulders and shit and get the bags out of the limb. The bears? <laughs> so they got all five bags down. Now they tore most of the bags open, you know, they dogged almost all the shit up in there. One of the bags had a half gallon bottle of extra zinc prescribed suntan lotion. <laughs> They sucked that shit back like it was Lori's margarita. <laughs> Suck that suntan Suck lotion back. Yeah. But one of the people in the five was vegan. <laughs> the bears didn't touch that motherfucking food bag. It's vegan food. 
<laughs> Those motherfuckers sucked back a half gallon of prescribed extra zinc suntan lotion. They didn't touch no vegan food. <laughs> I said, that's pretty spiritual right there. <laughs> Next thing you know, the lightning storm is raging. Rain is pouring down torrential. We've been soaked for six days. Everybody's tired, looking for some place to suck back some brewskis. I see on a strange sign, it says off this one road, there's a backwoods hostel down, point two down the way. I said, we going. I was by myself, but there was people coming behind me. <laughs> and I cruise to the spot, and there's a sign that says, trespassers will be shot. Survivors will be shot again. I said, hell yeah. I walk right in. There was a fridge full of PBR skis. There was frozen pizzas. It was a hainted grill that you're supposed to cook the pizzas on from what I could tell. So I sucked back six PBRs in about a minute and a half. And I set up the pizza to be cooking. All of a sudden, a strange truck rolls in with two dudes popping out. One of the guys, his name was Timmy Two Tokes. He was running the joint. The other guy was an inbred shrimp who couldn't speak. Yeah! Ah! Eyes sunken back in his head. I said, damn, son. <laughs> Movie Deliverance. Y'all seen it. That ain't got nothing on these dudes. That's child's play. I seen it a week or two ago. That's a mystical film. That was nothing like these guys. These dudes, those dudes was actors. These motherfuckers were off the chain. He goes, Bah! I said, what y'all been doing today? Timmy Tuto says, Smoking crystal now! I said, hell yeah! They start whittling sticks like you never seen. Motherfuckers start flint napping. Just knocking them rocks together, making arrowheads. Math activities. I said, hell yeah! Next thing you know, the shotters come out. Boom, 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 boom! Blasting up in the sky. Next thing you know, another truck pulls up with four inbred shrimps up in the joint. Obviously, they all look similar, but slightly twisted in a different way of piece. I said, fuck! They say, yeah, man! One guy had a huge motherfucking pair of bolt cutters. I said, who getting their fingers chopped off today? I said, not me. The reason he had the bolt cutters was they had just jacked a picnic table from a mystical picnic area up the street. There was chains also attached to it. And as he's chopping the chains, he said, We got problems with picnic table thieves right here. I said, Hell yeah. And then this lady rolled up, was so fucked. I said, I gotta go. I rolled straight out of there. It was too hateful. I was in a mystical town called Flag Pond, Tennessee, and I wrote this song about that town. It's called Flag Pond. Right? Yeah.
out of them like a straw and you hear her sucking them back like that lizards birds squirrels larger animals I don't want to name sucking the insides out of them leaving the skins hanging all around the place you'd be tossing up in the bedroom getting naughty and you'd hear to the side and they'd be like what the fuck is that noise? <laughs> oh, that's Skittles. <laughs> Sucking the insides out some motherfucker out there like a straw. <laughs> you know, we'll find the skins tomorrow. And they say, hell yeah, man. It's off the chain. Keep on tossing. It's off the chain. 
for me, it, is, it, was, it electrified the experience to hear the puss <laughs> sucking the entrails out while you be tossing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Taters was an indoor puss, all white. Big, fat cat. <laughs> was a yogic puss. Now you've seen all these cats that be yogic and shit bending around, giving themselves Marilyn Manson style 69s and whatnot. <laughs> that excites me more than most, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but Taters was an extremely yogic puss. Now he would do what some of these Indian yogis do out in India and in the mystic mountains and whatnot, they eat string and pieces of long objects like that, yarn and stuff, and they learn to control their inner organs, digestive organs and everything, and it comes up, they ask, and then they can use, learn the power of the organs to make it come back up and whatnot. <laughs> He would do this shit. Taters, we came home one time. Taters had eaten a bunch of cassette tape. And it was coming in his mouth and coming out the ass. To my boy, I said, That's your puss because Skittles was mine. I said, You're gonna deal with that. <laughs> I was on the shrooms, I said, I ain't gonna pull no tape out the cat's <laughs> But I put my ear real close to his rectum and I pulled the tape. And I can say that a rectum, a cat's tight rectum, Acts as a tape head. <laughs> I heard some mystic tunes lightly coming. As he pulled the tape slowly past the anal, anal squashers. <laughs> you can hear a little bit of music coming out of that tape. So a cat's anus works as a tape head, y'all. So just remember that. This next song's about that. Similar, similar type of thing. Still, the psychedelic. Young 
boy XP Cornbread Steve. <laughs> Extra Cornbread Steve got his name in a mystic, hainted, Cracker Barrel-esque backwoods diner. <laughs> Christian merchandise on the walls. Smoked out. But most of the smoke was cracking meth smoke. Waitresses was all puffing unholy glass pipes. Oh when you roll up in the restaurant and be fogged out, you couldn't see anything. And you just hear screaming and yelling. Ah! You knew you was in the right spot. <laughs> I took a psychedelic Italian noise rock band there one time. I don't remember what the fuck their name was, but it was a psychedelic Italian noise rock band. <laughs> and in the band there was an Italian white Rasta. <laughs> and he was ordering from the menu. And she said, What do you have? Good pancakes, son. Uh, with food. <laughs> she said, what the fuck? Pancakes with fruit. The fuck? <laughs> Pancakes with fruit. The fuck is he saying to me? I said, he's trying to say pancakes with fruit. <laughs> she said, why didn't he say that the first time? <laughs> I said, I don't know. <laughs> now, the first time my boy X-Tree Cornbread Steve walked up in the building of that spot, named Vittles was the name of the restaurant. Vittles. Next to the most hated tattoo shop I have ever seen. He went up with extra cornbread Steve in the building and he ordered the three vegetable plate. You don't do that at Vittles. No vegetables allowed up in this building. <laughs> the green beans painted as a motherfucker. <laughs> the grits saw better days. <laughs> the fried green tomatoes, they're black. <laughs> And I could go on and on, but you don't want to even hear about it. It's disgusting. But he ordered a three vegetable plate. And he said, an extra cornbread, please. <laughs> the waitress said, extra cornbread! <laughs> she rolled into the back. <laughs> that motherfucker came out with so much cornbread. <laughs> it was on a rolling vehicle. <laughs> Stacks were so high it was hitting cobwebs, dusting for them. Oh. Up in the ceiling. <laughs> high as a motherfucker. Stacks of cornbread. I think my man probably ate half of one slice. That's how we got that mystic name, Extra Cornbread Steve. <laughs> I dedicate this holy song to Lori. I know she likes this one, and I really appreciate her setting up this mystical show. Let's all cry. Right. 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 I can't cry no more. No more anymore. Sitting there on a pile of cords by the riverside, thinking about those beautiful round eyes.
So please holler at me afterwards. Goddess Complex is up next after me. You guys to check her out, man. She's off the motherfucking show. Yeah. And then Lori's closing it out, so you best stick around. Shut the fuck up. Honestly, Lori, you I like Lori. <laughs> Too, man, that shit was awesome. <laughs> big Tony, Big Russ. something and I believe my boy I was with he was tugging or pissing or something in the woods and I'm sitting there and the dude the old dude in the couple was sitting right near the edge of the drop off of this 150 foot waterfall and I'm looking out and he's looking out too the wind is blowing. And then he slips. And he falls and he grabs onto the rocks on the edge of the cliff. His feet dangling above a 150 foot drop. 
and he's staring into my eyes, holding on to the waterfall as it's blasting across him, and he's staring into my eyes, and then he lets go. And I said, fuck, man. And that dude was just staring into my eyes and my soul. In his last moments, and now he's probably, you know, impaled on some fucking rocks down there or some shit. 150 foot drop, like, damn, son, that's heavy as a motherfucker. <laughs> He starts screaming, where'd he go? <laughs> I'm kind of in shock. I said, motherfucker fell off the cliff. <laughs> and I go running down, climbing down psychedelic rhododendron ladders and stuff, blasting this 150 foot on the side, steep path, trying to get down, expecting to see an impaled carcass around the corner. Maybe catch a little quick long fork. Before the ambulance arrives or some shit. <laughs> but I hear, ah, I'm okay! I said, hell yeah! No long port, but that's alright. It's the preferred option. Come around the bend. He's laying there in a tiny pool at the bottom of a 150 foot drop. His head's popped open, the blood's blasting out. But other than that, he's chilling with ease. <laughs> I pull him out and he goes, Dude, that was the greatest ride of my motherfucking life. I said, hell yeah. His wife came down. Let me get all y'all's addresses. Jesus Christ. I gave her my address. <laughs> Those motherfuckers never sent me nothing. <laughs> so this last song is about you. Love you if
Chucky River Blue. Oh, 